everyone. Welcome to Manalot TV. I am your host, Sarah, and today I am thrilled to have Nikki Stringfield. But before we begin, I want to remind you to subscribe to Manalot TV and click that notification bell. Here we go. Hey, Nikki, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Super happy to be talking with you. How are you? Oh, I'm super awesome to be talking to you as well. I'm doing really well. So excited to have you here and really excited because it's perfect timing. You have an album coming out this week and let's, let's start by talking about the album. So it is one of your solo albums and you're working with Patrick and it is called live in the living room and the CDs are here. I'm just going to do a little, I love it. A little dialogue. I love that. it. So. Yes, we're super excited. Okay, so now this album is an acoustic album. Yes, it's definitely different and people are still learning that I play acoustic and that's totally new for me. I started playing acoustic over, you know, the pandemic when we were stuck at home mm -hmm. and we started just doing these uh, couch jam videos. We're like, let's do something different and challenging because we, you know, we can't go out and play shows and, and it just kind of took on a life of its own and people actually really liked it. You know, we, we did a lot of different kind of versions of songs and it's got a lot of songs that you would not normally hear on an acoustic guitar like Chop Suey and Ace is High and and a bunch of stuff like that. I've really enjoyed this because you were posting them on Instagram so I had a chance to not yeah. only hear them but I felt like I, I felt like I was hearing you sing more even though I've I totally have your solo stuff and I've heard you sing before but yeah. it just felt different somehow. It felt yeah. more organic and more like I was getting to know you in a different way. Absolutely. And that's the thing with this album is it's, it's live, it's raw, it's unedited. We didn't go auto tune our vocals. We were singing on the same microphone. So obviously you can't go in there and auto tune because it's all, you know, we're doing a lot of harmony. So it's, it's just raw. It's, it's us. And that's kind of how it was meant to be. Just a total departure of, of everything that I'm used to just totally putting yourself out there and, and seeing how it goes. And you said it was going to be a mixture of basically covers of songs that you just really enjoy and yeah. some original tunes. What's um, how, how many songs and uh, how many of each? There's 10 songs total and there's an original Heaven Below song, uh, When Daylight Dies, and then one of my originals called Divine Intervention. And the rest is all um, covers. So right. it, and it ranges from, you know, we have the Scorpions. Uh, what else do we have? Scorpions. I should know this by now. <laughs> oh, actually, there's um, an original from Patrick's old band, Union Underground, okay. on there. And then we have uh, some Alice in Chains. And then we have, you know, Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. So we, we kind of mixed it up. Maiden, System of a Down. It's kind of something on there for everybody. Like, I love it. You yeah. know, when, you, when you're deciding the songs for the album, did you sit and think about We Want a Nice Mixture? Or was it more like this is what we were doing on our couch during the pandemic. This is what came more organically. And this is just what sounded best. Like, how did you make those choices for the album? Yeah, I guess it, they're all songs that we did for our little couch jams. And then we went and we did a couple extra for this that we never put out the videos for, like um, Still Loving You from the Scorpions. And uh, what other one did we do that we had? Uh, the Shallow, the Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. But I think a lot of it came from, um, we wanted to keep it different and we really liked the challenge of doing stuff that would not, we didn't want to do a lot of ballads. You know, it's people, I think when they think of acoustic and I, I used to be the same way, it's like, oh, it's just, you know, you're playing a couple of chords. It's so easy. Why are you playing acoustic? It was so difficult for me to pick up an acoustic guitar and kind of shred on it. And that's really what we wanted to do was challenge ourselves and show people that, you know, just because you're playing acoustic, that doesn't. It was a huge challenge for me to take this on. And we did, you know, Avenged Sevenfold's Backcountry, which is a crazy song to be, you know, playing on electric for one. And you put that on acoustic. And I mean, it's, <laughs> and we've been playing all of these songs live at our um, hard rock cafe shows in Hollywood. So, and I think a lot of people questioned whether, can you really do that live? Is this real? And, oh yeah, we, we do <laughs> every song live. And we're actually going to be playing the album in its entirety on its release date on June 26th at the Hard Rock Cafe in Hollywood. Oh, fantastic. So we're that's gonna fantastic. play it front to back for the first set. So we're really, we're really excited. We just, oh, that's you know, it's just, it's fun to do something different. Now, are you gonna have an opportunity with, just with all the touring that both of you do and all the projects that you're already in, all the bands you're in, do you think you'll have an opportunity to tour this album? 
I really hope so. Um, you know, so far we've been doing a lot. We have had some residency shows at the Hard Rock in Hollywood. Um, we're going to do one in August here locally for us, Hermosa Beach um, in the South Bay in California. But we'd really love to play some shows elsewhere. I mean, so far we've done a show. I think our first acoustic show was in Arizona um, okay. last year. And then we've done some stuff in San Antonio. But we really want to branch out and, and we would love to go you know, play these because it's, I mean, it's easy. You get your acoustic and in our microphones and, and that's all you got to do. It's Plug in it's a lot setup, right? <laughs> more than, you know, bringing all your gear to these electric shows. So we hope so. Yeah. I would love, love, that. That. I, I would love to see you out here in Boston. I've um, never been to Boston. So I would really love really? That. Oh, then you have to, to see this. There's a re built in reason to do it because you've never done it before. <laughs> Exactly. That's great. So let's um, let's go back and talk about your career and how you started. Um, you're actually a 90s baby. And yeah. so unlike most of the people that I talked to on this channel who were, you know, sort of legends who made themselves uh, made their names in the 80s, you didn't have an opportunity to experience that um, firsthand. Um, and yet you're playing, you know, in a in a maiden tribute band. You were in one of my other favorite bands, Femme Fatale. Yes. which is a you know an amazing band that started in the 80s and you were obviously in a, a future all girl version which I thought was amazing and um, I did get to see see you guys play um, but I wanted to talk to you about that and when you started playing um, so if you were born in the 90s um, when you were coming up what kind of music were you starting to listen to like when you started getting into your own music buying your own albums what were you drawn to yeah I was born in 90s so I missed all you know, I missed all the fun. fun <laughs> Luckily, I had parents who were into 80s metal and rock. So I grew up listening to ACDC, you know, Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, all, all the good 80s stuff. And then Pantera, I'm from around Dallas, from a small town around there. So Pantera. And then, you know, the same for most people from the 80s era, you know, my parents said that they absolutely hated Nirvana. Right. <laughs> you know, of course. But I remember there was like a Nirvana unplugged album, a CD in like my dad's car or whatever. And I can't remember exactly how I, you know, got into Nirvana, but I was around 13 or 14. My dad was a guitar player, so he got me a guitar. And then it kind of sat there for a little while while I was in my Backstreet Boys stage, you know, <laughs> I liked that. Listen, I grew up on the 80s stuff and then, you know, I liked the current stuff as well. And I, I actually um, grew up, one of my favorite albums, my my parents said, or one of my favorite songs was uh, Rooster, Alice in Chains. They said I'd be out off singing it. Tom Petty was one of my favorites. My family always remembers me singing Tom Petty songs. So um, I just, I think I loved, I just loved music from an early age. And then I, I don't know, I just got so into Nirvana in high school. Like people knew me as like Nirvana girl, you know, Nirvana Nikki. I bought all the, the Nirvana stuff. I did the I got the flannel out. I would go get my dad <laughs> from his work and I would wear that. <laughs> I don't know. I just developed this love for, for his music. And then after that, you know, like Avenged Sevenfold came out mm -hmm. and that really got me into the guitar playing. Like I started off learning Nirvana songs from the tab book. And then I City of Evil from Avenged Sevenfold came out and I was already in love with them from their previous album, Waking the Fallen, but City of Evil, I remember putting it on my headphones in the car I was like what what is this this is it's current and of course I always loved you know Maiden and all the guitar stuff but I was like this is current these dudes are all tattooed up and they're hot and they're out there this is this is happening now and so it really inspired me to kind of pick up and do more lead guitar stuff and and I wanted to shred after that like oh. even more like I loved I was inspired already but that really made me feel like, okay, there's still, it's still going on. You know, I can yeah. still go up there and shred. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that must've been a nice feeling. Cause I, I'm kind of getting the sense timeline wise that even with Nirvana, that was still almost before your time. Cause you were sort of born and tiny while it was actually happening. I was four when, when Kurt passed. Yeah. So, which is crazy to think. Yeah. But yeah. So I, I, I was just kind of a big old mixture I guess of like a just a music fan, yeah, right? Yeah. And then yeah. when I was a teenager, when I was most influenced by the current music, it was kind of the, not, I wouldn't say I was all into the emo stuff, but some of the, 
you know, I was definitely the kind of emo goth kid with the, <laughs> I had the pierced eyebrow. Evanescence was, was huge with me vocally. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I always like the creepy, you know, the creepy stuff. So anything, <laughs> you know, a System of a Down, a Treyu, Bullet for My Valentine, like all of those bands back then, really. Yeah. So you had a lot of, you had a lot of great heavier bands to uh, reach out to and go see play live. Now with parents who were into 80s music, were they really like hardcore into 80s music or was it more just they grew up with it and just liked music, just like everybody in the 80s? Uh, I'd say they were, they were pretty into it. My parents were a uh, you know, looking back at their, at their pictures, they would go to the shows. My dad was in a band, mm -hmm. um, you know, playing guitar and my mom would always take me to concerts. And that know. was my next question. What yeah. shows did you get to go to as a kid with your, with your parents? Well, you know, my first, my first concert was Backstreet Boys okay. with my mom and my aunt. And, um, then after that, we started going and seeing more rock shows. Um, I won tickets, to see Evanescence so that was my first time in the pit when I was young and that had a big influence seeing like you know being right there and then I would you know Motley Crue um ACDC I didn't go see Maiden until recently like that never happened Megadeth so it was you know some of the bigger ones I started going with two with my friends and stuff that's great so, yeah. Um, I, I heard somewhere that your dad actually helped you when you, when you first got into playing guitar around 14 or so, yeah. um, that your dad helped you with the tab book so you could get yeah. the Nirvana songs. How mm -hmm. did, at that point, was he kind of over the nineties thing or was it kind of like painful to him to, uh, <laughs> to have to help his own daughter with, with Nirvana songs? Well, he ended up liking Nirvana. Okay. So, and he, ended, you know, his, his band was kind of more 90s ish okay. rock too so he you know he adjusted I think they both adjusted a bit especially my mom she's like my best friend and who would have thought her daughter was such a nirvana <laughs> <laughs> they both adjusted <laughs> and they both like my mom liked the current likes the current music too so yeah. am I you know so they they both adjusted I think yeah yeah. I think is, a lot of people did eventually. It took a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I can only, I can only imagine, you know, you have your favorite stuff and then this whole new, you know, wave comes in and it's like, wow. I, well, I it was only, almost like an intentional wiping away as yeah. opposed to like a slow, right. You know, a slow movement. It's a bummer. Like I, I can't, I haven't had that in my lifetime. You know, it's just kind right. of things that, you know, it's kind of a little bit of everything now, I guess. But I think so. I think so. Do you still like like the did you listen to a lot of boy bands or was it just the was it just Backstreet where you went to like most of that that whole Backstreet and Sync, Britney, all of that? I was totally into Britney Spears, uh -huh. Christina Aguilera. I was team Backstreet Boys. I wasn't so in sync, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was little, so I was into to all all of that stuff. And um yeah, I, and does I it, still does it still I, pull at your heart? It does. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I still, you know, if I'm with my family and we're doing karaoke, you know, there's gonna be Backstreet Boys. There's gonna be some Britney Spears. I love it. I need to know your Backstreet song. If 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 you do karaoke, is there a Backstreet song? I think it's "I Want It That Way." Oh, yeah. yes. okay. Uh huh. Because I think that one is. Was that the one? There's one that my dad likes, and he hates to admit it, but I think it's that one. <laughs> I have a video of everybody in my family just doing that one night. At party. How about Britney? Do you have a Britney song? Oh, probably. Probably. Oops, I did it again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't listened to Britney in a long time. I'll admit Backstreet Boys. I put on a lot. I still yeah. put that on a lot. Yeah, you know, I will say, I think uh, th that was not my time at all. Like I was pretty yeah. But they were the one group of that whole era that I actually could appreciate. I thought they had really good adult contemporary songs. They, I, they do. I still go back and listen to them in their voice. I mean, they can all sing, you yeah. know, and, and some of their later music is actually still good. So yeah. I, yeah, still I, never felt, I always felt like NSYNC was bigger, but I always thought Backstreet yeah. Boys was better I personally. Think, I, I don't know. I just, for some reason I was like, ew, NSYNC. <laughs> Things. you have to pick a team why. I feel like you, you have know, to pick right I don't know why as a little kid I just I liked I liked Nick Carter I don't know he's okay got it got you know, all about Nick Carter <laughs> that's amazing did you ever get to meet any of them no no I, I saw him that one day you yeah, saw him that one time and then I haven't got to see him since I really wanted to see them while they were here in LA and that's I didn't funny. pick it out but one day 
You will. You should. I mean, I think everybody should see their childhood. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was going to, me and my mom were talking about going out and seeing them in Vegas at one point. Just, you know, girls trip, let's go have fun. That's so funny. Haven't made it happen yet. I love it. I think you should do it. (laughs) All right. So, um, so you, you know, you picked up the guitar at about 14, you worked your way through this Nirvana book, learned all these songs and got into it. I actually also heard that you grew up in Texas also, which I don't, I don't, you may have made reference to, but I also heard that you didn't actually really start playing in bands until you moved to LA a a few years later. And I believe, was that after you graduated college? Yeah, it was right before it was my last semester of college. I moved out to LA for an internship. Okay. So that's that's how I got to move out to LA because I was uh, majoring in radio, TV, and film at the University of Texas. And I was like, how do I get out there? You know, I have, I want to be there. I want to try to do music there because it was, there was nobody in my hometown. Like there was just no, I had to drive to Dallas and I was about 45 minutes out. And then I, that's why I went to college in Austin. I'm like, Ooh, it's the live music capital. Of the world. <laughs> right. Definitely going to find people to jam with there. And yeah, it was like, it was nothing that I really liked, you know? And so moving out to LA really, really made the change. Cause I was in two bands within, or I was playing with two bands within a, a month of being oh, here. <laughs> amazing. And what did that feel like for you? Cause you'd been playing for many years, pretty uh, much what, by yourself. You're just kind of yeah. jamming out on, on your own. So what was that? Was that feeling like, were you like excited, terrified? Like, was it, what was the feeling? It was a little bit of all of that. I think every emotion possible, because if you, I was always so shy in school. I hated public speaking. I hated being, well, I, I did some like little plays and stuff when I was younger. So I guess when I think back, I, I did get on stage when I was younger and did all, I was always like have one of the main parts when I was little, as I grew older, I have total stage fright. <laughs> so I was like, how, how am I going to get on the stage and, and get up there and play? But I knew that's what I wanted to do. And so I think after the shock and the, the initial stage fright went away, it was total just excitement and happiness and it felt right to be up there finally because I knew I had always gone to so many concerts it it was my favorite thing to do and I just always knew I wanted to be up there so it just felt yeah how about the singing though when did you uh, because you said that your your parents picked up on you singing this and that but did you know that you wanted to also be a singer like is that something you knew about yourself or is that something you picked up later on I knew, I knew deep, deep down, I always wanted to sing, but I never had anybody actually be like, you sing really good. Why you should sing. So I never had that. And then I guess it was kind of, um, probably 20, maybe 2016 or so. I was just like, you know, I just want to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to give it a shot and just see how it goes and do a single or something. And you know, if it sucks and people hate it, then at least I did it for myself and I, I tried. And and so that's kind of how it just got started. I, I kind of put it out there. I gave it a shot and then people actually liked it for the most part. And and then I'm just kind of, I, I really love it, especially doing these acoustic shows. Mm-hmm. Um, it really, you know, there's there's no hiding behind, you know, distorted guitars. You're It's raw and you're out there. And I just had so many people come up at these hard rock shows and they're like, I just, I love your voice. And I'm just maybe want to cry. I'm just like, Oh my God. You know, I just never thought I, I, the only regret now is that I started so late in life singing. And I really wish I would have had the courage to do it when I was younger, but I just, I was, I was scared. I didn't know, you know, I, I just, I was too scared to give it a shot when I was younger, but was your family, when you started playing in bands, you moved to LA. So they, you know, they send you off to college. They probably yeah. went you to, you know, I don't know if you lived in the dorms or not, but I'm sure there was some sort of ritual of parent with child at college. And now you're in LA and you're in two bands. Did you, were your, was your family like, okay, we knew she was going to do that. Or were they were like, well, no, wait a second. We sent you to school for <laughs> TV and film. And now you're trying to be yeah. a rock star. Were they surprised or did they know? I think they knew that, I mean, they knew that's what I wanted to do um, mm-hmm. because that was kind of my backup. I'm like, I'm, I'm good at school. I'm going to do college. And then, so I think, you know, they knew I was always off at concerts okay. and they knew I was always playing guitar. So I, I think they knew, but I think they were also shocked that I actually made it happen. I think everybody was probably shocked. Like I said, I was the, the quiet kind of nerdy goth 
kid yeah. girl and um so I think everybody was kind of shocked when I actually started doing these shows and I I stayed out in Los Angeles and and it just kind of two bands. <laughs> yeah, two bands, an original and then you know playing with the maidens and filling in at the time it was so it was pretty crazy I I think you know I think they were happy you know as long as I finished college and all that I think that's they were all good with that and you know, they, they drove out to see, they drove out from Dallas to El Paso, which is about a nine hour drive to see, to see me when I played in Texas. So now they've, they've seen me at a million shows. So right. <laughs> they're, they've always been so supportive. Yeah. That's amazing. So I'm, I'm lucky to have that. So how did you get the maiden's gig? So while I was interning, there was the NAM show which is like a huge, you know, thing for musicians. And there was one class that was a music industry class. And of course I was the only person that was really interested in the music aspect of it. And so my professor got me into NAM, and I went every day and he just told me go and, and network and network. And I didn't know a single person. I, I hadn't even been living here for a month. And I just went down there every single day and I met up with the people from Schechter who I had been playing Schechter guitar since I was 14. So, um, you know, I hung out kind of at their booth every day and just networked and met people. And that's how I got in with my original band, which was called Before the Morning. And they had just formed. And then they knew Courtney and Nita from the Maidens. Okay. So that's kind of how I met them. And then there, the Dave Murray position in the Maidens at the time was kind of like a rotating door. At the time, it was Nita Strauss and Neely Brosh, both playing the Dave Murray position. And they both had other projects going on. So then I got thrown into the mix. Okay. So, the, you know, the three of us rotating out the position and we all kind of knew different sets and, and all that. So that's how I got started in with the Maidens. Was there an actual audition or was it more at that point where they like, oh, we kind of know her and she, we know she knows how to play and personalities yeah. looking or? I guess it really wasn't an audition. I, I think I went in and rehearsed with them. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, I think it was Kirsten asking if I, actually liked Iron Maiden and I was like yeah I love I love it. that was something I grew up with like some of my early YouTube videos I had the killers poster you know on my wall or whatever so that yeah I just kind of got thrown into it like I just I learned the songs real fast and, and just kind of went from there I'm trying to imagine a metalhead who doesn't love Maiden I don't know if I've ever met you one what? I've met so many guitar players who don't like Maiden really so many there yeah it's so I can't even imagine there's just certain bands that you're like how could you not exactly I especially as a guitar player right I know that's true especially so I'm like player. yeah I've met several recently that are like oh, I don't really like me okay that's that's sorry but I couldn't be in a tribute band I, yeah I think that would be very if painful. I did it I didn't <laughs> band, like you have to like that music if you're playing it that often you know well, so. yeah, well, A, it's like, why would you do that if you weren't into it? But also it would just be painful if you just didn't really love it. it right. Having to play, because, you know, we play a lot of the same songs. I mean, that I feel like that you would go crazy eventually if you didn't like the music. I mean, I feel like people go crazy playing their own stuff over and over again. Like yeah. you have to hear those songs over again after 40 years. And so like right. <laughs> somebody else's stuff. But yeah, I, I'm trying to think if I've ever met anybody who didn't like Maiden, but Maybe I've met them and I just didn't know, but I can't even imagine. But it's funny that she asked you that specifically. Like, yeah, I guess some people before had not been like huge Maiden fans. But... That's huh. so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So that's how you got into Maiden. And then yeah. at some point you got into Femme Vital, which is another band yeah. that I love. Um, yeah. So how did you meet Lorraine and how did you get into Femme Fatale? Yeah, it was kind of the same situation because uh, Courtney and Anita both played in Femme Fatale. And then Nita was stepping away. I don't know if she was going to Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper, I think. Yeah, I think that's what Lorraine said. Yeah. And uh, so then I jumped in that one too. So I got and in. At that point, the girls probably all, they all knew you because you were in a band together. And yeah, and I, I didn't know. I can't remember the first time, but it was the first time that I had kind of met all of, all of the girls in Femme. Um, and it was just so fun. Everybody, everybody was just so fun to hang out with. And I, I do miss it. I miss all of them because it was always a big old party. <laughs> Were you familiar with Femme Fatale's music um, when you first joined the band? A couple of songs. Yeah. Like, like the uh, big hits probably. Yeah, the big hits, the big one and Fallen In and Out. Yeah. Love. Um, so I knew those two. And yeah. then uh, it, it was, 
it was so fun because you know Courtney took over all the the solos and the leads so I just played rhythm so it was just really a fun gig for me to just go sit you know, <laughs> I just got to play some rhythms and and just you know rock out with your friends so really nothing better than that yeah when you joined the band I didn't I didn't even get to ask Lorraine this because um so much of my conversation with Lorraine Lewis was about her joining Vixen and uh, we did talk about um, Femme Fatale and how she formed, but um, we moved on to the Vixen topic. So I want, I wondered when you joined Femme Fatale, was there an understanding that um, the band would go on and maybe create new music or, or was it always meant to be sort of a band that goes on and plays like pretty much the first, that first album? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I know she had put out that I know Femme Fatale, the original lineup had recorded an album that was never released. Yes. And, and, you know, the one had one more for the road. Um, and I think it was Buried Alive or was it, I can't remember. Um, but we brought songs from that album and played that too. I think, I think we were all hoping for that, but you know, with everybody's schedules, it just, you know, you get, I think there was what, six, six of us in that band. It gets so hard to coordinate everybody's schedules yeah. and everything. So that would have been really cool. Had That's we done what I've been hoping for. I would have been hoping for now that we have this new all female lineup that, yeah, the, finally that second album yeah. that we never got to hear when it was actually recorded, it came out. So I was thrilled, but I was hoping for a third album and a fourth album and so forth. But then I just, it just occurred to me when I was getting ready to talk to you, I was like, you know, I never actually asked Lorraine. I just assumed there would be yeah. a third album. You know, I never actually asked her, like, was that actually in the plans or not? That would have been so awesome. Yeah. Like that would have, I, I bet we could have come up with some cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then what would it sound like? You know what I mean? Like, how do you strike that balance of classic yeah. femme fatale with, with all of you, with your own, what you have to bring to the table? Yeah, I would, I guess we'd have to try to keep it, keep it close, but then, you know, you have, you have, you know, Courtney and I bringing in so many other inf influences. So yeah, I, I would have, it would have been interesting. Yeah, it definitely would have. Definitely. You know what? Maybe you never know. I, I mean, still, you know, I mean, I know Lorraine's and Vixen, which I'm so excited about, but in my mind, this could still happen. <laughs> you never know. Hey, you never know. We're all still around. So yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, and then in addition, you have your solo career. So yeah. for somebody who is you know, in, well, at the time, you know, you had Maidens, you had Femme Fatale and that. And, um, and then of course, since then you've been in other bands. How is it as a musician that you're managing so many different bands and projects? And then also you're like, you know what, I want to do a solo album. How, first question is how do you manage all of those projects at the same time? That's a good question. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I guess, you know, the Maidens, it depends. It kind of all revolves around the Maidens touring schedule. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I'm home from that, I totally focus on, on my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I, when I realized, okay, it's time to do a solo album. So I did an EP and right now I'm just, since I'm home and we have two shows coming up um, this coming week um, in Northern California, but all of my free time right now is being devoted to, well, now putting this acoustic album out right. <laughs> and really just working on this new album. So I guess it's, it's kind of just whenever I get free time, it's all, you know, I just, I guess you got to get kind of laser focused on, on certain things for a bit. So do but, you find the spaces in between and then just kind of yeah focus on, on one thing until it gets done or partly done? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much just whenever there's some free time. Okay. Here's some original stuff. Okay. Can we get, and whenever, you know, the maidens aren't on tour, we, Patrick and I both look at our schedules like, okay, when can we fit some acoustic shows in? And that's, that's the real challenge is like, okay, when are we both? Okay, here's a couple of dates. So it, yeah, it's, I guess it's the, the balancing act and it, it does get tricky, but that's why I like, I've got a calendar over here on my wall. I can constantly look at, I have like three calendars right now where I'm just like, okay, <laughs> you know, so it, it's, I was hoping to have this new album of mine out earlier this year. And now it's looking like end of this year, just because, you know, things just keep coming up and. and so this is the next, next album. Yeah. So uh -huh. not the acoustic one that we were talking about earlier, but the following yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. So okay. there's a, my upcoming solo album. It's going to be the first full length album that I've that I'm doing. I've done an EP. This is a full length. It's got 11 songs. 
We just finished rhythm guitars on it this morning. Oh. So we're on to vocals this weekend. So I'm really excited. Amazing. And so I'm hoping for a late October release. And that's if oh, I can wow. really just keep keep working in, in everything. So that's fingers crossed, you know, it's a lot of scheduling and, and getting things to line up to make it happen. Yeah. So, yeah, that's two albums very close together. I know. Yeah, that's that's another thing. I was like, oh, we're at least with the acoustic one, it was, you know, we pretty much had it all done. Right. Uh, so that was pretty easy. But for this, this one, for the solo album I've been working on for the past, gosh, for, I guess for over probably about a couple of years now. Yeah. So it's, it's been a long time in the making yeah. for sure. And it's finally, there's a light at the end of the tunnel nice. and it's getting there. And I'm so excited. Do we have a title for the, for that album yet? Yeah, it's going to be called Apocrypha. Ah, very nice. Okay. Very so nice. I, and it's going to, I, I think the, um, I love Egyptian stuff. So I think the cover is going to be like Egyptian themed. Okay. So we've done the photo shoot for it. Um, we're starting the album art soon and yeah, it's, it's getting there. You're, you're so busy. And then how about how, Heaven Below? What's going on with Heaven Below? We also are going to have an album in the works. Oh my God. <laughs> I have so much going on. It's like, oh my gosh. But we decided we are going to finish my album. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as that one is done, we will move on to the heaven below stuff. Okay. But there are a ton of demos sitting there ready to be recorded. So, okay. So, so you haven't gone into the studio yet with that one. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're finishing mine. And then as soon as that one is done, we're jumping to that one. Okay. So the acoustic album live in the living room, June 26th, totally yeah. done. You just showed it to us. Pre-orders have already gone out the door yeah. and then everybody can go out and buy it June 26th yeah. and can listen to that. And there's a lot of great YouTube videos, which you guys are going to keep on your, I'm sorry, um, your Instagram videos mm -hmm. in that, um, yeah. that they can find the next albums coming out. You said fall. God, I hope I, I'm shooting for late October, late October. Okay. I hope. Okay. Not and sure. then soon you're going into the studio for the next album with the band. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then we didn't actually talk about that band. So um, with that band, uh -huh. you, with Heaven Below, you had actually joined in originally as a touring guard guitarist, I believe. Yeah. Then I believe you ended up in the studio and then it was like, okay, I guess Nikki's part of, <laughs> part of that I band. <laughs> I'm on the album. Yay. <laughs> yeah. I just started playing some shows with them. Um, and then they were working on their cover album called rest in pieces. It's like a tribute to a uh, departed musician. So it's, it's got a bunch of Alice in Chains. It's got, you know, ACDC, it's got a bunch of great cover songs on there. So I joined in towards the end of that album. So I'm, I played on a couple of songs. I sang on a couple songs. And a lot of the songs were already done. So this next album is going to be all original stuff, just kind of straightforward rocking. So that's great. And you'll be in from the beginning on this yeah. one. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of them are, are written, but I'll be playing on all of them this time. Great. Yeah. That's great. So I wanted to ask you, you have been, you're in a tribute band, mm -hmm. you've done covers, yeah. um, you've done sort of original original stuff for bands like a femme fatale but that isn't necessarily your own right so you're you're coming in yeah. later and then you have stuff that's pure that's completely you you're writing you're singing you're playing guitar emotionally is it different for you um i imagine it's very different when you're creating versus playing some stuff yeah. and Absolutely. then the other part of the question is when you're on stage does it feel different for you doing like those four different types of um music yeah, I will say like, I haven't got to, I've done some of my original songs acoustic, but I haven't got to perform them with like a full band yet. And mm -hmm. I really am looking forward to doing that. I'm hoping um, with this upcoming album to do like a album release party and have a full band and, and actually get to play these songs. I'm, I'm dying to do that because I have not got to do that yet, but it is different. It's so different to be singing stuff that you actually wrote and playing stuff that you actually wrote. I mean, there's there's really nothing like that. Even though I love Maiden and I loved playing in Femme Fatale and, and of course covers like, you know, if I'm playing Nirvana, of course I, that comes from the heart right there, but there's just nothing like 
playing and singing your original stuff and, and people, you know, seeing them out there, you know, enjoying, enjoying the song. It's just, there's really nothing like that. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy. And what is, what is your songwriting process for when you're writing your originals? It's kind of different for each song. Um, on my previous EP, like some songs would, um, some songs I just hear um, the vocal harmonies and, and stuff. So there was a couple of times I was sitting on a plane and the song I have, uh, When the Devil Comes Down, I just started, I heard the chorus in my head and I started writing down the lyrics and then I heard the guitars and then I started writing the verses. And when I got home, I just picked up the guitar. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm hearing in my head. And the whole song was written. And then, so a couple of songs go like that, where I just completely write around the vocals. And that kind of comes easier to me. Honestly, the vocal hooks kind of come first. And then some songs I'll just be messing around on the guitar and I come up with a riff and then I write the song and then I have to go back and write the vocals and lyrics later. And I feel like this new album is kind of 50, 50. And that was when I knew I couldn't, cause I was like, Oh, I could do, maybe I'll just do some instrumental stuff. And then I was like, I've always just loved the, the vocals are so such a big thing for me. Like I just hear the hooks and I hear that that comes first to me a lot of the time. So I was like, no, I was like, I've got to, I got to give the singing a shot. <laughs> that's, I, I just, that's what I hear in my head or else I have to bring somebody else to come in and sing it. But then you, know, you get the idea in your head, you know, and then it just kind of sits in your mind and you want to get it out. You know, it's hard to get somebody else to, to sing something the way you hear it, I guess. Right. Uh, was it different for you before you started singing uh, the songwriting process? Um, I, well, really the first song that I wrote, it was, it was me singing on it. So, oh, so I, okay. So it really came together when you started singing on your own. Yeah, I was going to do, um, I was, we were talking about doing an instrumental for this, for this album. And I just, it all came together with all vocals. I'm like, well, now I'm, I guess maybe for the next one, we, there's been talk about doing like Patrick and I doing like a instrumental EP or something. Um, and there is one cover song on this album that's very vocal driven and it's totally out of the box. Uh, and we just finished that one up today. So that one's going to be really cool. Um, I'll just say kiss from a rose seals kiss from a rose. Ah, and it's so nice. I'm like, there's so many versions of that song out there but ours is so different right now and it's it's pretty rock and hard yeah. so yeah I just I don't know it's it's always kind of been vocally driven for me I guess um one other thing that I learned about you was that um at one point when you were younger you wanted to play drums and I wondered um especially where you write songs and you know you have so many different projects did you ever have a chance to get on a drum kit and learn how to play drums I really wish I, I would have really loved to learn how to play drums. It seems so fun to me. You know, my uncle plays drums. So, you know, I kind of sat and I'm like, I cannot keep a beat. I don't know how you move your feet and how you do. I cannot do that. I'm so not coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar just seems so, so easy to me now. And it kind of came natural and there's just no way with drums. And I, I, you know, for my first, for my demos, I go in there and I kind of, tried to program some drums to give the drummer an idea of what I was trying to have in my head. And then, you know, we used uh, Shad, our Heaven Below drummer. He mm -hmm. played on, on uh, this Apocrypha album. And so I gave him my horrible little drum, my demos. I'm like, you know, just play what you hear. Just do what <laughs> you want. I'm not a drummer. And I cannot tell you, I, I cannot convey what I'm trying to. Oh, that <laughs> is funny. Hear. Oh, I wish I could, but, and then of course he gets in there and does all this crazy stuff. I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah, don't even pay attention to what. <laughs> what That's I amazing. I love that. <laughs> I wish, if I had any other instrument, I wish I played piano too, but yeah, drums seems so fun. Yeah. So you were really just drawn to guitar and singing. That was just, yeah. those were your meant to be your instruments. Yeah. Did you, so I did mean to ask you when you, when you started playing guitar, you said you were sat around for like a little while before you really got into got into playing in that once you started practicing were you were you that kid who just practiced all the time um or or, or did you just pick it up here and there um did you go through spurts or were you just kind of like that kid who just like went home and just practiced pretty much I 
I used to draw all the time. So guitar kind of took place of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was kind of known as like the artistic kid. Like I was voted like most artistic of my senior class and all this stuff. Cause everybody just was used to seeing me draw all the time. I'd finish my work and I would be drawing in class. And then I'd go home and I would just sit and play guitar pretty mm-hmm. much all the time. I was, it was pretty much school, guitar, school, guitar, mm-hmm. concert. <laughs> right right that's how you but, filter time <laughs> yeah it was pretty much school guitar concerts and hang out with a couple of my few friends and my family and then that that was pretty much my life and that's one thing people are you know I feel like you're so talented I'm like no it, it's called I had no life <laughs> for a very long time because I would just sit and just play over and over and over until I you know played what I wanted to play so yeah just totally kind of consumed my life so in a it good sounds way. like it sounds like that's your life now too though it's just yeah. playing touring playing to, except now instead of going to concerts you're playing concerts for other people right yeah I now I barely get to go to concerts it's totally switched <laughs> it's like yeah. now I now I you know enjoy going out to see a show very rarely unless you know we're on a festival then I get to go see a band but yeah it's pretty much wake up like this morning, wake up, play guitar, record. Um, you know, I'm going to go over the maiden set for this coming weekend. Uh, and then our got to go over our acoustic set and everything. And we're trying to throw some new acoustic songs in. And then, so yeah, it's, it's pretty much guitar, guitar in some way, almost all the time. So I cannot complain. I, if you would have told me when I was picking up the guitar at 14, that I would be getting to do this all the time, I'd be like, no way, no way. <laughs> You know, so all the, all the time and the hard work, totally, totally worth it. That's amazing. So let's recap for everybody what, what you have coming up. Cause it's so much, you have so much going on. So again, June 26th, um, mm-hmm. we have the new album coming out, the acoustic, uh, the acoustic album. Um, yep. A few months from now, you will have your next solo album full length. Yep. Um, and then there will be, uh, you'll be going into the studio to record yet another <laughs> album. <laughs> yep, the Heaven Below album. <laughs> Heaven Below. Um, there'll be some touring um, going on. So you have some shows um, for various projects. Yeah. Um, and then, God, you're just busy. I don't know what else we can ask of you. <laughs> <laughs> just to keep, as long as I'm busy, like I'm, I'm happy. So Great. just you know, it's as long as there's music, I'm yeah. happy. That's Hanging great. out with the animals in between, you know. There you go. There you go. I've been good. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and for being a part of this. And for anybody who's watching this the week of, um, I just want to thank you, Nikki, for your giveaway. So anybody who's watching this the week, Nikki week, um, as I like to call it, everybody gets their own <laughs> week. Um, thank you for our wonderful giveaway. And everybody can go to uh, our the Instagram, the metal net Instagram to see all the rules and that anybody who's seeing this afterwards, enjoy this interview, but you missed the giveaway. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. But thank you so much for that. And you'll definitely have to come back when um, your next solo album comes out. And really when any project comes out, come back and let us know so we can make sure we put all the dates and everything out for everybody and let people know when they can get everything and where they can get everything. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Would love that. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Nikki as much as I did. You can also check out my interview with Linda McDonald, who talked about the Iron Maidens as well as Phantom Blue. And there are so many other interviews you can check out on my conversation series, as well as my lifestyle series, Metal Bites. And in order to do that more easily, you should just make sure you're subscribed to MetalNet TV and also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I will see you again really soon. Have a great week and much respect.